Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And I'm Trevor Hankins. And this is Welcome to On the Air with Power Squared. Uh, this week we're uh, taking a look at Free Comic Book Day. I know it was last week, and I know we talked about doing this uh, God, like um, two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> which we didn't know the date. Um, but I, I, I've, we've been to a lot of Free Comic Book Days. Yeah. And um, I know for myself at least, I will pick up my comic books, take them home, bag and board them, and put them away, and maybe never read them. So I thought this year we would kind of force me to read them by talking about <laughs> what we pick up at the show. That's a good motivation. Yeah. So we each picked up, we went to a local comic book store, and we each picked up five comic books, some of which are duplicates, Yeah. which we'll get into. Um, but So we're going to start with talking about the books that we picked up. Yeah. So I picked up five, as I said. Uh, one of the ones I picked up was, uh, yes. I don't know if you can see it without the light, Blade Runner. It's two stories, 2029 and Origins. Uh, Origins uh, tells uh, the story of an LAPD detective, Cal Moreau, is tasked with tracking down a Nexus 5 prototype replicant expect, ex, uh, um, expected of committing murder or as suspected of. suspected is right what I meant to write yeah. suspected of committing murder and then the 2029 version is uh, Ash Ashima with a former Blade Runner rejoins the LAPD Blade Runner department and hunts down a rogue replicant sort of sounds like the same story um, we were not really big fans of the movie yeah I know which is not here or there. And just to clarify, the original movie, we haven't seen the sequel. <laughs> no, we've seen the, we saw the director's cut as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Added the, what, five seconds of yeah. <laughs> uh, So we're not really big fans, so I'm not really wanting to uh, jump in further into this. These weren't bad stories, if you're really into Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, and they do, it's kind of interesting, they have a, a similar, uh, the same supporting character in both stories. So it's kind of interesting. But it wasn't enough to make me really want to keep reading because I don't really don't want to immerse myself in this universe. Right. So, um, a other uh, comic book I picked up was called The Boys, which is a popular Netflix series. Yeah. Is it Netflix? No, or is it's it Prime? Amazon Prime. Prime. Yeah, Amazon Prime. Okay, <laughs> streaming, streaming. Anyway, <laughs> uh, The Boys. Now, one of the reasons I picked this up was we were told once at a comic. Comp- Book. Yeah, Comic Creator Connection, We, uh, which is basically a comic book speed dating, mm-hmm. in a sense. And when we described our story to someone, they sort of reminded them of the boys. Yeah, which so either we did a really bad job of describing our story, <laughs> or they really weren't paying attention. Because uh, we mentioned boys, so it sounds like the boys. Anyway, um, this is called Hero Gasm, and basically, under the guise of going into space to fight for Earth, all the heroes go to some tropical island and have sex. And it's like that for 20 pages? Oh, it's not even 20 pages. But <laughs> However long it is. Yeah, and again, I'm not bothered by that, per se. Uh, it wasn't what I was expecting, because this is, again, nothing like Power Squared. Um <laughs> But I was a little surprised that this would be kind of free comic book day because there are like little kids there. Yeah. And theoretically you could pick, you know, might have heard of the boys or think that's a cool title, pick it up. And, you know, maybe that's not really, it's not really, uh, we were joking that there should be some sort of authority that would, (laughs) would, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulate comic books. (laughs) There was a long time ago. Uh, And we're not saying that, but I was just a little surprised at the choice. I'm fine with it, but maybe a little kid might get kind of weird ideas about heroes, I guess. Uh, the other book I picked up was The School for Extraterrestrial Girls. If you can see that. Um, it, uh, it's about these extraterrestrial girls who are basically on a uh, train trip from their school to another school. A little Harry Potter vibe in there for me. Uh, and they're going to a what's supposed to be, a, I think, like a summer camp. But it ends up being the boys' school, and they're going to camp there. And they're going. They're at the end of the story. They're getting ready for a party. Right. So not a lot goes on. Uh, it wasn't really. I'm sorry to say that engaging in that way. Right. Um, and 
I mean, it, it probably has possibilities, and maybe this was just a way of kind of introducing all the characters in sort of a non com combative way or something. But right. I, yeah, I wasn't really. If if our comic book doesn't have action, this has none. Right. <laughs> Uh, I picked up something that I realize now I don't think it was actually part of Free Comic Book Day. It was just on the table. So it was fair game. Yeah, it was fair game, but it just wasn't because there's no official Thing anything on it. it. It was a black and white anthology called The Works. Um, and there's basically there's four stories in it. Uh, one is called um, The Good Samaritan and basically a guy thinking he's Helping out a hostage kills the wrong person and helps the helps the robbery go forward. You yeah. Know, he, yeah. He's a he's a traveler. He stops at a kind of a space age Seven Eleven gas station kind of thing. Yeah. Goes in to try to get gas. Thinks that the uh, the woman that works there is being held held by a a bandit. Kills the guy. Turns out. She's the robber, and he was a policeman trying to stop the robbery. Right. So he kills the wrong person. Good Samaritan. And doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, rescue is a boy and a dog go through a series of, I guess, rescues. Uh, there's no dialogue. It was really kind of hard to, kind of hard to follow in that way. Yeah. Because you know, just things happening without knowing what's going on. It would be nice to have some sort of something to point you a little bit of what's going on. Yeah. To me. Um, terminal Velocity, uh, a pilot, um, he goes at this really fast speed, and because he's at that speed, he's able to communicate with aliens, right? Right. And it's brief, but he wants to have that experience again, so he spends two and a half years building a, uh, a uh, vehicle that will get him to that speed, tests it out, sees these creatures... And there are people watching him do this, of course. You know, yeah. Those would be. And when they they get to the vehicle, he's gone. Whoa. Oh, I know. Uh, and then there's... Sounds like a Twilight Zone take on uh, Nanosuck from Transformers Animated. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that was actually kind of intriguing. And then uh, the last human, I believe, is a... Because <laughs> some of these are kind of hard to tell. A human woman becomes the subject of study by aliens. All right. So that was this. Uh, again, I don't think it was officially part of Free Comic Book Day. It was probably just somebody put it out. And, you know. Right. So, what did you think of it? Uh, there were some good ideas. Yeah. Um, again, the, the rescue one was, I think, I kind of, I didn't quite get, you know, understand it because, again, I had no text context for it. Yeah. It was just happening. So the final book I picked up, which actually is the first book I picked up, uh, because it's Archie, and uh, come on, it's I Archie. Picked. Yeah, I picked that up too. Uh, it's past, we'll present, get to and that. future fun. There's four little mini stories in here. Uh, one is called Crisis on Riverdale Earth, and it's sort of a Spider Verse yeah take using. Uh, I, and I didn't realize, again, I'm not a, a major Archie reader. Archie wasn't cool in the 60s when I was reading <laughs> comic books. Because um, he it looks like he's stuck in the 50s. Um, wasn't relatable. Um, but there's apparently a multiverse of, of yeah. Archies out there, including a, uh, the original, the one that we all know, which is not the original, apparently, and then a guy from Riverdale, which is the new, yeah. the new Archie. And then there's Archies in between. Uh, and they have to group together to help uh, stop. Um, I think it's yeah. Uh, they have to save the multiverse. They have to come together to save the multiverse. Right. And there's a superhero and all that kind of stuff. I didn't realize any of that goes on. The <laughs> uh, you know, last I remember was the song "Sugar Sugar," but that's the Archie <laughs> group based on the comic book. That ages me a whole bunch. Anyway, and then there's Happy Anniversary, um, or Archieverse. Or, um, it's uh, about Archie being 80 years old. Yeah. And he needs help from the original Archie and the modern Archie to get to his party. Of course, he's a day early. Uh, there's Archie <laughs> in, in uh, Gignometry, 
where he learns he has a, his eyes on a guitar, which he can't afford, and then Betty introduces him to... Uh, oh, giganometry? Giganometry. It's, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big word for me. <laughs> anyway, um, she introduces him to gig work, a app called Chore. Yeah. So he can make the money and buy the guitar he wants. And it's, it's spelled like chore, but without the E at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, a, there's, I think, a little uh, sort of a drawing of Jughead or something at the end, which I didn't really count as one of the stories. But anyway, um, you know, if Archie's free, I will pick it up. <laughs> uh, and I did buy that one time at Comic-Con, buy that 75th anniversary yeah. anthology thing, which I have not read. But I did yes. buy it. So anyway, um, so again, I, if Archie's free, I will pick up Archie because it's kind of like again, I'm aging myself here. Big boy restaurants used to give away a comic book. Yeah, it's kind of that relevancy. So, <laughs> Trevor. Uh, I also picked up Archie. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think I kind of get what you were saying uh -huh. about Archie. Uh, my interest in Archie is generally sort of like on and off, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You're always aware like, he's out uh, there. <laughs> yeah, mostly. <laughs> uh, thought it was interesting that uh, they in uh, the uh superhero type story they referenced uh afterlife with archie which was an actual story which was like it was an actual comic or was uh archie and a zombie apocalypse right they, they've done a lot with the archie i mean he met they met kiss and yeah. they've done some you know weird things didn't with he them. also meet punisher in the tmnt yeah i think so or at least punisher there, there was also there was also a Sharknado comment. <laughs> Archie gets around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty good for a guy that's 80 years old. Yeah. And he looks great. Yeah. Really for 80. Looks like, looks like a teenager from the 50s. Go ahead. And of course, on the back, they advertise Riverdale. <laughs> right. The new incarnation. Uh, the one I picked up was... Uh, Batman Special Edition. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, t a preview of two stories that both tie into an event. Uh, first one is uh, Fear State, which is uh, I think the uh, uh, sorry, the event is called Fear State. And it's uh, centered around Scarecrow. Uh, so, uh, in the. Sorry, I'm trying to. Uh, in the preview, uh, it's uh, basically trying to. I guess there was an event called the Joker War. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the sort of, there's sort of, uh, sorry, uh, the, the comic sort of shows like, uh, sort of the, uh, the uh, sort of a response to that with a new type of uh, police force while Batman is uh, dealing with the effects of uh, Scarecrow's uh... Eurotoxin? Yeah. Oh. Right. And mm -hmm. and uh sorry, probably didn't explain it right. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other uh, preview is for uh I am Batman, which is uh, a new book being introduced as part of the event. Um, it's, uh, it's basically introducing uh, another Batman uh, who 
his identity is uh, he is the son of Lucius Fox. Oh. Huh. All right. So, would you want to read more of this? Um, I'm not sure if I would like go out and buy all the single issues, but it's uh, it sounds like it sounded interesting enough to consider. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, those who are interested, there is a there's this checklist right here <laughs> uh-huh. of all the that's, issues you could buy that's yeah. everything oh. that ties into the fear state event right yeah oh. that's a lot of books yeah yes. that's why we <laughs> stopped buying marvel and dc <laughs> <laughs> so you think our story are extra long geez. that's interesting how they're trying to actually do something with uh, scarecrow yeah. uh i there is also a small interview in there that I read, and basically the idea is that, uh, like, Scarecrow could, Scarecrow, uh, could tell that Batman's, uh, whole thing was shaped by fear in his, uh, fear in his past. Uh-huh. As, a, uh, his plan is to have the entire... Uh, all of Gotham City experience fears in an uh, experience fear in an attempt to have people like evolve. <laughs> now, wasn't that the? You know what I mean? Yeah, wasn't that part of a plot of a movie we just saw? What did we use? Scarecrow. Oh, it was I don't know if it was animated or not. But... Oh, it might have been a Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Like fear was the thing, and Batman was. Uh, captured because of his f- something with the gas or well, something. Uh, yeah, Scarecrow's uh, main thing is using fear toxin, and Batman's uh, past usually comes up as a yeah device. I mean, to it just ex- sounded familiar. That's all. Wasn't trying to ex- explore his trauma. Yeah, uh, but this sounds like uh, taking that to a bigger scale. Okay. It just sounded. Familiar. It sounded interest. It sounded interesting. The okay. Right. Moving on. Uh, I just wanted to right. keep moving. Uh, next thing is uh, this preview of uh, ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead and uh, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so, uh, the ZOM 100 preview is, uh, like an excerpt of, seems like an excerpt of the first chapter. Uh, it's kind of a funny idea. Uh, the idea is that, uh, like, uh, there's a office worker who's trying to get to work. There's a zo- and so- there's a zombie apocalypse, but his only concern is trying to get to work on time then when it turns out he doesn't have to go to work anymore he realizes he suddenly has a lot of free time (laughs) 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 and so his his goal is to uh, cross off all 100 items on his bucket list while there's a zombie apocalypse going on pretty pretty funny idea (laughs) Doing something fun with zombies, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny take on a zombie story. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's like I hadn't heard of it before. It's, it's something I might consider. <laughs> right. Sounds fair. Um, uh, as for Demon Slayer, uh, do I have to explain the basic plot of Demon Slayer? Uh, at least the, yeah, the basic premise. Uh, the basic idea is that, uh, it's a boy named, uh, Tanjiro. Uh, his, uh, his family was killed by demons, and his, uh, sister is Nezuko. 
was turned into a demon. And so he becomes a demon slayer in an attempt to try to get her back to normal. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So he's hunting, he's uh, killing demons so that he can cure his sister. Okay. Sounds noble. Um, we've, uh, uh, we've seen the anime. Okay. We haven't seen Mugen Train yet. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Get it. I'm getting it. Oh, uh, the, uh, preview that's in there is, uh, something that, uh, it has been animated. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, an excerpt of a story where, uh, Hero is, uh, fighting these three demons that, uh, they have the ability to, like, uh, swim underground. Okay. And, uh, they, they feed on 16-year-old girls. Exclusively? Yeah. I remember from the anime. Huh. Uh, how is it seeing? How is it reading the manga version of the of what we had seen animated? Um. Uh, I uh. I thought the anime uh translated it well. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of weird in a way. It was kind of weird seeing the original artwork because the anime is gen generally has a cleaner look to it if you know what I mean yeah <laughs> yeah of course when, it's, when something is animated they're going to refine the art style let's hope <laughs> <laughs> so did, would you, would you want to read more of this um potentially <laughs> uh, also when I was reading it I was kind of since I was watching, since I know the I've seen the English dubs, so I was kind of hearing the English voices as I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to do that. I mean, yeah. It's hard, yeah, the dub is pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. I, uh, I I only picked up four things. Oh. Uh, so the last one I picked up was uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 30th Anniversary. Yes. <laughs> Which is, uh, it's different from another 30th anniversary special that was released and got a special Comic Con cover. <laughs> okay. So, uh, different story? Is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's related. Uh-huh. Uh, the, uh, has two stories. Uh, the first one is on. Original story with uh, the classic Son uh, classic Sonic, <laughs> and uh, the story is that uh, uh, Amy uh, Amy Rose has been uh, secretly making comic her own comics based on Sonic's adventures. <laughs> yeah. And she's, uh, too embarrassed to share them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, uh, the second thing is, uh, basically a, uh, recap of the IDW comic up to this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, been reading it through the... I'm keeping up through the trade paperbacks, so, uh, it also touched upon a story I hadn't read yet, <laughs> but I, uh, was inaccurate with what I, I read most of it, so it seemed like an accurate summation. <laughs> okay. So, I know Sonic has been something you guys have been watching and reading for a long time. Yeah. What what is attractive to you about Sonic? I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just something you get into. <laughs> okay. I mean is it from the game you got into it? Or? Uh I think it was yeah, I think the earliest exposure was uh a re release uh, a like PC re release of the original Gen Genesis games. Okay. 
Sure. And I just kind of spiraled from there. <laughs> okay. I was mostly spurred by the animations. Oh. Alright. Yeah, so trade access to because of a blockbuster. Right. <laughs> I remember the <laughs> blockbuster. When you could rent things on VHS tape. Yes. <laughs> oh, those are the days. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? Uh well, so, uh uh, sort of spurred me to try to actually read the full 30th anniversary special. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh yeah, the yeah Comic Con one. But uh, uh, I thought it was uh, interesting seeing what they did with uh, different what they're doing with different versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alright, so I guess moving on to my polls. Okay. Or what I grabbed. Uh, I also grabbed the Sonic the Hedgehog 30th anniversary special. What? And I enjoyed that. Like the uh, story with Amy was kind of relatable for creative people. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, uh,. Yes, we got uh, spoiled a little bit by the recap, but we're still going to read the uh, last story, any, the last story in the recap anyway. Uh, so I, the next thing was uh, the Street Fighter Back to School special, uh, which involves some of the, which involves uh, two of the characters. I, forget their names off the top of my head but they attend a uh, thing at school that's uh, basically trying to entice you to go to different uh, colleges and they can't decide what where to go so the uh, students who are presenting those colleges uh, get into a fight and the and the girls uh, lose interest uh -huh. <laughs> and go with uh Dan Hibiki. Uh, <laughs> okay. a jump character. Uh, I don't normally uh, re keep up with Street Fighter apart from playing uh, the games, uh, but I thought it was uh, it was a fun story and it had uh, good artwork, as you can expect from Udon. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, keep reading Street Fighter comics. But uh, it's a solid. It's a solid read, anyway. Right. Uh, so then the next thing is this uh, Oni Press Summer Celebration, which is uh, a preview of four titles. Uh, hope I don't butcher this. Uh, Jonah and the Unpossible Monsters. Mooncakes, the Tea Dragon Tapestry, and the Sprite and the Gardener. Uh, uh, they were the previews weren't long enough for me to get a good impression of mm -hmm. the stories, uh, but I could tell they picked uh, basically the beginning parts to try to get you invested. Uh, they had they generally had good artwork. It was interesting seeing a variety of styles. Uh, and stories, of course. Uh, but I wasn't necessarily uh, gung-ho about continuing uh, reading any of them. Okay. Uh, I do know Tea Dragon Tapestry is related to a book that we already picked up, which was uh, at Comic-Con, which says uh, Tea Dragon Society. Okay. So I'd probably read that anyway. So I've uh, read it, and I liked it <laughs> right so it was kind of a reminder that i should read <laughs> you dragon society also, also a reminder that i hadn't i haven't read the second book because i didn't know there was a second book <laughs> yeah so this is a preview of, uh, preview of the third book so it's kind of uh out of context okay uh so that was that so i picked up uh solo leveling which is a uh, Korean uh, webcomic or uh, manhwa. Okay. Hope I pronounced that right. 
Uh, it's about an E-class hunter named uh, Jin Woo Sung, who is uh, pretty much uh, only barely stronger than the average human. So he uh, bar can barely make enough money to like live uh, and provide. And uh, he has a near-death experience that introduces him to a uh, level up system, an RPG style level up system that only he can see. Okay. Now, uh, this didn't go long enough to see that RPG style level up system. Uh, I will say I liked the artwork, though based on the layout, I could kind of tell it started as a webcomic. Okay. Not that that's a bad thing. No. It was a. Uh, uh, it's been pretty successful, uh, despite being pretty new. Um, as for the story, uh, I personally wasn't sure that I would read more of it. Uh, the vague notion of what a hunter was, based on what I read in here, reminded me of Hunter Hunter and how in Hunter Hunter, a hunter is kind of a thing you want to be, but they were kind of vague about exactly what a hunter does. Uh, and I can already sense that solo leveling has a little bit of a uh, you know, wish fulfillment going on, mm -hmm. but uh, I wouldn't stop anyone from picking this up it seems like a solid read for anyone interested all right and then the last thing i picked up was a yeah, was a kodansha comics preview of uh rent a really shy girlfriend uh it's a it's a it's actually a spin-off of rent a girlfriend and it follows uh sumi sakurasawa who is a uh, who is actually a pretty popular character in Rent a Girlfriend, from my understanding. Uh, little research. This is a uh, prequel story that focuses on her uh, go becoming a Rent a Girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, really shy, but is actually uh, really endearing mm -hmm. and actually surprisingly <laughs> relatable. Uh, after uh, reading it, uh, I went from who is Sumi Sakurasawa to Sumi is precious and should be protected at all costs. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I would, I was going back and forth on whether or not I would like read the full manga or if I would wait for an anime adaptation and try to watch that. But uh, I actually liked what I read. So uh, when you rent a girlfriend, what are you renting her to, for? Is uh, it just to be kind of show up at a party with you, or not entirely sure? Okay. Okay. But I'm guessing like, oh, I need a girlfriend. I'll pay you to be my girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then there was a was also a preview for a school frozen in time. You can see at the bottom there. Uh, from the creators of Your Lie in April and Anime Supremacy, for those who uh, recognize those. Uh, there was only like four pages, so I didn't get quite a uh, good grasp of the story. Although the premise is they're trapped at school, the clocks have stopped, they can't remember what happened, and a friend is dead. <laughs> which is an intriguing premise, but again, there was only like four pages in there, so it didn't really entice me to keep reading. So um, I'm throwing this out to the group. Was there any one free comic book that was actually told you a whole story or did you seem like there were previews and, you know, uh, hyping you for the next issue or you sh you're to k jump on board? Yeah, it's so it's not a complete story. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was short, but it was a complete story. Right. It was exactly the length it needed to be. Uh, with uh, Rent a Really Shy Girlfriend, I didn't know if they were showing like the first chapter mm -hmm. or part of the first chapter, but it was like a solid 26 pages. Wow. And it actually flew by pretty quickly. Um, see, the Back to School, Street Fighter Back to School special was a complete story. And uh, that was kind of it for me, I think. 
All right. I was just curious because it seemed like a lot of them were, like the Blade Runners were like just enough supposedly to whet your appetite to want to read two more sets of stories. Yeah. The anthology uh, think, was pretty. But go ahead. That was kind of a one-off. Yeah, uh, this was also a complete story on its own. <laughs> but it also had a preview in it, but still. <laughs> I think it was also trying to get you to, oh, yeah, Archie. You know, yeah. The new Archie, at least, or something. Yeah. Okay. I was just asking the question, because right. as I was reading them, I was like, oh, this is just enough to kind of go, oh, do yeah. I want to keep reading it or not? All right. Uh, so why did you only pick up four? Because I was all I could, I was all that grabbed my, I was okay. all I could think of. <laughs> Fair enough. I was just scared. Anything else you want to talk about with free comic book day? Uh, yeah, free, with free comic book day, uh, not a whole lot of, usually not a whole lot of things are that enticing or when I've picked up books, I've kind of felt like it was some weird obligation <laughs> uh the this round it was actually interesting to pick up ones that actually might uh, seem they seem like they might be interesting one thing i was remembering from free comic book day was two years ago it seems like a decade <laughs> we did our first signing on free comic book day yes at the same local comic book where we, we heisted these from yeah but uh Bring it always try to bring it back to Power Square, <laughs> but we did have a signing on Free Comic Book Day. That was kind of, uh, which is why I have this little Free Comic Book Day thing on my wrist. Right. Uh, so I guess that covers it. Okay. Uh, what? Go ahead. That guy figured out a better way to just to describe the preview. Okay. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, there, there was, um, I guess there was an event called the Joker War, and, uh, while Batman is, uh, suffering the effects of, uh, Scarecrow's fear toxins, uh, you're seeing that, uh, you're seeing the police, uh, the police's, uh, Gotham Police Force's response to what happened by sort of uh, beefing up their police officers. Okay. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, if you liked this and you're watching this on YouTube, uh, leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And if you picked up your own free comic book day comics, we'd love to hear what you ha what you have to say, or if you think we're wrong about our opinions that <laughs> yeah, we're not you know i'm not coming trying to come across as an, yeah. i'm an expert on what makes a good comic right. book i'm just saying how it affected me yeah and you may love the stuff we picked yeah. up I mean, if there's something we're not getting then yeah. feel free to explain Let us know. <laughs> all right thanks for being on the show trevor uh right. until next time i'm david hankins i'm paul hankins and i'm trevor hank and this has been on the air with power squared